Hey guys, we're here with Tim from Yuba. We're looking at a new one. This is the Fast Track. I, I've never seen this, and there are some really exciting hardware going on here. You're a product manager and an engineer, so what's going on? All right, so um, if you're familiar with our lineup, um, you know, we've always had a long tail, kind of a mid tail. So previously we had the Boda Boda, um, and we kind of decided to go two different directions with that. We went with the Combi, which is more of a um, super affordable cargo bike. Okay. So that one's a steel bike. And then we were looking for something to kind of slot in there that would um, be kind of that mid-level to high-performance bike. Huh. And so our compact bike of choice now is the Fast Track. Wow. And I'm noticing that this looks like it can be stood on its rear end to save space. That's correct. Is that yeah, right? So let, yeah. Wow, look at that. So if you want it to be nice and compact, you can actually oh, wow. turn that sideways. And then look the widest that. part of your bike are going to be your pedals. This is perfect for someone who has tight space. Maybe you want to put this, you know, a lot of times I got my bike in the hallway and people are tripping on it. So this yeah. is perfect. It fits in a garage or maybe in like a closet really nicely. And I, and I noticed that the stem, it seems like it's telescoping as well. So you can yeah. adjust the fit a little yeah, bit. Yeah, exactly. So you have about 30 millimeters of adjustment. It's, it's not much, but it gives a little bit of um, a range for, you know, shared use cases. And so. back here, similar thing, huh? The double leg kickstand down here. Right. So this is, again, it's compatible. This is our compact stand. But if you um, see in our lineup, we have the stand together, which is a 17 inch wide kickstand. Um, that'll, that's compatible with this bike as well. Is that the one that's over there on the spicy curry? Yeah, that's So it's correct. just so an extra wide yeah. stabilizer. And if you're loading this up with kids or whatever, mm -hmm. would you consider this utility or is it still long tail? It looks pretty long. Yeah, it's it's more of a mid tail. It's kind of- Mid tail, oh that, my yeah. gosh, yeah. So <laughs> cool. it's, uh, it's not quite as long as the spicy curry, but you still get a lot of utility out of it. And then, um, yeah, so one other feature that we really like is the rear wheels on the back of this. So I used to, I used my knee to kick it up, but then you can kind of wheel it like into an oh, elevator. Oh, that is around. so handy, so, yeah, so smart. Good job, Tim. Oh, yeah, look at that, look at that. Oh man. And then, so I'm just gonna wheel this back down. So yeah, just hold both brakes while you're doing that. Yeah. And then yep. again, if you're using this around kids, we always recommend to, um, you know, make sure that the wheel or the bike is stabilized. You're pushed up against the wall. Yeah. And you educate now your users. So it doesn't tip over yeah, on exactly. them or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. It's so aluminum frame. Oh yeah, aluminum frame. Um, and then we've got a suspension fork. That's kind of neat to see. I'm, I'm guessing. I don't know if this is. It says RST. Yeah. So this is RST fork. Preload and is that like a. Yeah, I see preload adjust on both sides. So you can set it up for added weight if you have that front rack or just a heavy bike. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's cool. And then so, you, um, yeah, we have about 80 millimeters of travel on the front. And it just makes things a little bit easier for, um, you know, you don't have to pick your lines when you're in a pothole filled city. Oh, and it's hard enough you're stabilizing like a, a full cargo bike. Yeah. You know, just sometimes you're just going straight. So having a little bit of extra comfort, especially with these smaller wheels. I mean, these are 20 inches, so it lowers the entire platform. Compared to like the spicy curry they have a bigger 26 inch wheel up front it lowers the attack angle it feels a little bit more natural but when you add the suspension fork it kind of balances things out and then it looks like these are decent volume tires uh you know looks like 20 by 2.3 inch some of the specs that you see on this might be a little bit different uh, we bounce between a yeah 2.3 and a 2.4 okay yeah yeah so a little bit wider add some comfort a larger contact patch. I'm loving the black spokes, the black hubs, and everything on this. Even, you know, yeah, cranks, the chain arm. I, I like uh, the pedals too. Sometimes with these bikes that are meant to be sort of folding or storable, you get those plastic folding pedals. They aren't as good. I mean, this is much sturdier. And uh, if you are someone who rides year round, like in Colorado when it snows, having the fenders, having the integrated lights, and then having, uh, Oh, do we not have integrated lights? Up? Oh, yeah, we do. Okay, I was like, I was looking for it. Yeah, so we got, yeah, we got our light up there. Nice. Uh, and then we have our other one. Uh, it's on the fender. Ah. So that's over here. There it is. Now, does this come with it? Like, what's this whole thing? So this is, yeah, our new system that we've kind of been developing over the last few years. It's called the DRS, which stands for Dual Rack System. Um, and essentially, yeah, we wanted this bike to be not only compact, but multifunctional. So, um, you know, these fold up and out of the way when they're not used, but when you want to carry a passenger, they, they fold right down. And then there's actually, um, you know, another little lever back here. And then what you can do is you can actually, you know, take these little T-bars, swing them up, 
What? Kind of lock into position. Oh my gosh, how cool and is then that? And you have like a nice loading platform. It's like a pizza rack, huh? Yeah, exactly, so like, you can haul all kinds of stuff on here. Um, if you want to load up, you know, throw some, some boxes back here, or if you want something that might be a little bit bigger and might ever hang, yeah. you can fold these down and, you know, overhang the side. Huh. You know, strap it in. We have a lot of strapping points, so. This is so cool. I have never seen something like this. Super well thought out. And I'm guessing you've got a pretty good load capacity. What's the weight rating on that? Yeah, and I, I believe, you know, this bike is actually at 440 pounds as well. Okay, so, super um, high. Yeah. And then down here, we've got a really nice drivetrain. It looks like a 10-speed Shimano Dior. They do have the clutch, so you can loosen it if you're doing rear wheel maintenance, or you can tighten it. And a lot of these cargo bikes have a longer chain, so that just keeps the chain from bouncing all over the place. They do have a nice chain cover and then a chain ring guard up here that can act as a bash guard to protect the Shimano motor. There's the kickstand and then I noticed these rubber things. Is that for this or what's the rubber? Yeah, that's exactly. So these are just the little contact points for where our swing arms um, bump in the body. It keeps noise down and yeah. it just protects the frame. No vibration. Nice skirt guards and stuff. Is this compatible with like Yep child seats and your surround and all those other things too? Yeah, so um, the child seat of choice for this bike is the uh, Yep Next. It's yeah. essentially before we were using the up windows, um, which are great, we love those, but we're looking for, um, I guess, more compatibility. And um, they actually mount into these and they clamp onto these sections huh. right here. So these are cool. kind of the parallel tubes. This simulates like a traditional rack, basically. Exactly. That would be the tubing. Um, but then you have that extra sturdy sort of surround, I'm guessing just for strength. Is that the yeah, idea? yeah, we like to have um, you know, pretty robust sized tubes. Um, people are loading our bikes up. Quite a bit. What, what's going on with these things right here, Tim? And so th this is for um, our pin lock, and essentially it's like a quick cafe lock. So oh, can, for the wheel. You can store it up here, and then you can store it down here, and that'll lock the rear wheel into position so you can't roll away with it. Huh. Um, when these bikes are loaded up, they're definitely pretty heavy, so walking away with one of those is going to be quite a chore. So. Oh, for sure. I don't know. These wheels now, that, you're making it easier. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So it's got the Shimano drive train or drive system. It looks like this is their standard sort of external pack, fairly lightweight. Do you know the capacity on that? Yeah, this is the, I think, 500 watt hour. It's like 504 watt hour, 36 yeah. volt thing. Okay, and then down here we got the Shimano motor. E7000. E7000. It's out, I think, 60 newton meters of torque. Yeah, but, not um, bad. The, we like the riding mode on this, so it's more catered towards mountain bikes, but it actually applies really well for cargo bikes too. So huh. in the trail mode, you get kind of a a range between eco and uh, and boost, I guess. So when you need that torque to kick in and you're pedaling, it's going to push you forward. Yeah, Shimano is kind of a purist company, and you look at other Shimano parts like the derailleur and stuff. Um, reliable, quiet, efficient, and it's a multi-sensor thing, right? Like pedal cadence, pedal torque, and then do you have a magnet back there, or is it a hub? It's a magnet. Magnet. Okay, so there's a spoke tuck, magnet. Tuck around back here. And then the brakes can't forget about those. So it looks like 180 millimeter hydraulic. We got Magura which you were saying before, it has that smooth actuation because of the way the piston goes. You don't have like a reservoir off to the side. That's what I've been told. I mean, I'm drinking this Magura Kool-Aid here, but. But yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we love the Magura rig, so. Very nice. Do a quad piston calipers and then the bigger piston, dual piston in the rear. That's correct. Very cool. Anything we missed on this one? Um, I think that's about it. So yeah, I mean, it comes with this integrated front rack. Oh, it does? So, that's nice. And again, the purpose of this compared to our other rack, the front one is just to keep that footprint size down. So yeah. uh, we're hoping, we, we do offer a bag specifically for this one, but if customers want to bolt down a crate or anything. Yeah. And it's also compatible with the bread basket. So that's our other basket. So ah. we, like to, we like the modularity. We want people to build out the bikes for their use case. Well, yeah, I mean, look at the potential here. You got like a cooler back there, some of those, what do you call those panniers or saddlebags or something? Yeah, so these are the DRS bag. Yeah. And then we got a huge basket up front. You can remote, you can relocate the light. And I love that they've got that side window for extra visibility, better visual footprint. And a couple of colors. We have three colors. Right now, what we don't have uh, shown is our high visibility green. Okay. And that's the one that I'm personally riding, like to be seen. I'm, you know, calling yeah. my dog on the back. So. Is it like that neon green kind of like yeah, yellowish so thing? It's like close to the spicy curry that we had way back when. But yeah. A slightly different hue. Sweet, man. Well, you guys have dealers all over the place. It sounds like globally? Is that globally? Yeah. Yeah. Before we go, I wanted to point out, you know, they're trying to get that low standover height, but we do have that extra support arm right here, like a mini top tube, just to keep it a little bit more rigid, add some stiffness. I see that down there too. So it's a really cool looking bike. I feel like you've done a great job. Thank you so much, Tim. It's been good. It's a pleasure.